uh, experiment number five uh, we are gonna do the microwave optics experiment in part one refraction through the prism in this part we will measure the index of refraction of a styrene pellets in theory an electromagnetic waves travels in a straight line if there is no de change in me media but if electromagnetic wave passes through a media in which is different than previous media then its direction will change and it will be refracted which is called refraction the relationship between two medium can be shown with this formula which is so-called law of refraction, also known as Snell's law. Theta 1 is the angle between the incident wave and the normal to the boundary between two medium. Theta 2 is the angle of refracted wave. N1 is the index of refraction of a media where the incident electromagnetic wave is in N and 2 is the index of refraction of media where the electromagnetic wave passes through after refraction. In this index of refraction is the ratio between the speed of electromagnetic field in vacuum and that in the material. If we sketch of a refraction here is the incident angle and here is the outgoing angle and here is the boundary and left hand side as an in index of refraction and right hand side as another index of refraction now uh, let's look at our setup this is the microwave transmitter and here is the prism uh, filled with the styrene pellets uh, we put the prism uh, on the goniometer which shows us the, the angle of refraction uh, first of all we um, we set the angle uh, 180 degrees so we are, we are um, changing changing the angle so that uh, we can uh, so that we can see the uh, amplitude changes now let's put on the prism here We, uh, we should place the prism uh, in where the angle between the source and prism uh, 90 degrees so that we can easily find the refraction uh, angle of the refraction and here is the receiver With this knob, we can adjust the, adjust the sensitivity and this is the multiplier. 
on which the scales from the least sensitive to most sensitive. In this experiment, we want to find the angle theta at which the sig signal is a maximum. Here is the initial incoming theta because this is 90 degrees the electromagnetic wave passes through as it is and this is the incident beam and this is the outgoing beam or refracted beam We need to calculate the theta. We, we know the initial theta here in geometry. And this is the refractive t angle. So in this formula, an initial sine theta initial is equal to and final sine theta. And we are going to find the theta. Now, uh, we need to change the angle and uh, we should look at the amplitude where the where it uh, it is maximum. And we are going to stop at the maximum value of the amplitude. So record the angle angle cha changes now I'm slowly change the angle now we have a maximum amplitude I'm checking the angle between Eight degrees. We know the final index of refraction, which is one index of refraction of air. Um, we know the initial theta, so it, uh, which is zero point thirty four. And the final theta which is 0 0.47 so we can find the initial index of refraction which uh, of which the um, styrene pellet So if we divide sine theta by sine theta initial, we find the index of refraction of the pellet. In part two, uh, Fabry Parrot interferometer. In this part, we will measure the wavelength of the e electromagnetic wave by using Fabry Parrot interferometer. In Fabry Parrot interferometer setup, there are two partial reflect reflectors placed between 
in, in between the transmitter and the receiver. If the incoming, wave, uh, incoming electromagnetic waves passes through the partial reflector, some part of the wave transmit, some part, part of them reflect. There are lots of uh, waves be between the, these two reflectors. Uh, if the transmitted EM uh, electromagnetic waves and the wave which reflects from uh, second reflector and then first reflector and transmit from the second reflector and reach the receiver, uh, receiver are in phase, then we get constructive inf interference. If they are out of phase, then we get destructive interference. In other words, if the distance between these two, two reflectors are, uh, is equal to n times lambda over 2, then we get constructive interference. If that is not equal to n lambda over 2, we get destructive interference. In the experimental part, we are going to observe maxima and minima by changing the distance between the reflectors. We start with the distance where the maxima is observed then move the reflector when tan minima is observed. We will continue to move the reflector until the next maxima observed, then we will stop and measure the final distance. Now we have a maximum value at 27, count the minimums. One, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Then where the maximum is observed here. This is the 41. Now we start with the 27 centimeters, which is and and with the at the 41 centimeter away. The displacement is D. Here is 14 times 10 to the minus 2 meters. And if we write the formula Where the angle is 90 degrees, the, dis uh, dis uh, the displacement times 2 is equal to, uh, we count 10 minima, so the wavelength of the source is Two eighty nanometers. Part three, uh, Nicholson interferometer. In this part, again, we calculate the wavelength of the microwave in a different setup. There are two reflectors and a partial reflector. Here are the reflectors and the partial reflector. When we, when the electromagnetic wave meet the partial reflector. Some part of the wave reflects, some part of the wave transmits. Then two, wave, two waves reflect from, reflect from the reflectors individually. Then meet the partial reflector and then reach the receiver. If the receiver reach, uh, reads the maxima, then we have constructive interference. Otherwise, destructive interference.
In the experimental part, we are going to change the distance between the partial reflector and one of the reflectors while the other stationary uh, stay stationary. Again, we will do this like previous part by counting 10 minima and then measure the displacement and calculate the wave wavelength. We are starting with the D1 is equal, equal to 19 centimeters and the amplitude here is maximum. Now let's count the minima, 10 minima. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and the maximum value here. 32 centimeters. And the displacement is 13 centimeters. So, again, This formula, we counted 10 minima and 2 times 13 times 10 to the minus 2 and theta is 90 degrees. So we have lambda s. 60 nanometers. 